So today we are going to speak about. So everybody is talking while well, talking about Gen AI. I really want to kind of uh, touch upon the ethical aspect of it, considering that AI itself, the the conversations around the ethicality of AI itself were not were, remain unanswered. Uh, in today's world, when we are already moving to Gen AI, it's very much important to address the questions of uh, ethicality with respect to Gen AI. Uh, so my first question to you is, you know, enterprises that have been successful or that have stood the time have always evolved. And that is, in fact, the very reason why they have been able to uh, stand the test of time. So can you help us understand what the world looks like in an area where these enterprises don't adopt Gen AI. Why is it so important for organizations to adopt Gen AI? Good question, Kachyap. Uh, because Gen AI has got many connotations. Some people almost think it like a silver bullet, that it will solve every problem that they have. Equally, some people are so skeptic about it that they think this is just a phenomenon which will, which will come and go and it will help them stay untouched. In my opinion, both the views are wrong. Uh, it will have its usage. It will have a huge impact on the way people are working. It will force people to reinvent themselves. But at the same time, uh, it is not going to, neither is going to solve every problem, nor is it going to be something that will uh, not be able to address many issues that we have today or, or all its answers are going to be flawed. So we are somewhere in the middle where it is going to be horses for courses strategy that people will follow when it comes to Gen AI. When it comes to organizations, I am reminded of Marshall Goldsmith's book, which they talk about what got you here won't get you there. Uh, every organization will have to think about it like that. What they have been practicing to do a bunch of things tomorrow may have to be done differently because the expectation of the client is going to change. The expectation of every stakeholder is going to change. And the way people are going to ingest the data is also going to change. And hence, uh, in that changing dynamics, it's going to force almost every organization to take it very seriously and go down this path. But how it will impact each of them is something which all of us will see in the next 12 months. Now that we have established uh, that the adoption of Gen AI is inevitable and really important for organizations, especially large and successful enterprises. What are some of the ethical concerns that stand around Gen AI, especially considering that many questions remain unanswered uh, about the technology? So, like I was trying to tell you, there is no one-size-fits-all for Gen AI. It will vary not just for the specific industries that we are talking about, it will also depend on which functions or horizontals of that industry is going to deploy Gen AI. An example is within banking, the way a risk function will look at Gen AI will be very different from the way sales and trading will look at Gen AI. Equally, um, the way banks will look at Gen AI will be very different from how a media company will look at Gen AI. So the use cases are phenomenal. Uh, the opportunities of Gen AI could also be exponential. But it is like, you know, uh, one of those uh, toys that we have played or the tools that you use, which if not rightly used, can lead to a lot of disturbance and disruption in the system that may almost force you to go back 20 steps instead of going forward 10 steps. So it needs careful consideration before it is implemented. And it also needs a very thought through uh, application of Gen AI, both from an use case standpoint, as well as its output and delivery uh, aspects. The other aspect around uh, ethics of any technology is the transparency around it, especially if it is taking decisions in a very uh, area of uh, that is high of high concern or at high, that has high stakes in it. Then the transparency of that decision making in uh, uh, remains important. What is it that organizations need to do if they are to be transparent uh, about their Gen AI applications or services? Yes, Kashyap. You make a very good point in terms of the ethical concerns and very relevant also from an SGA standpoint because we give it paramount importance in whatever we do because we believe in life is possible. From that context, I would say there are three things that really worries people who are dealing with generative AI and more importantly, who are deploying Gen AI. 
is it fair is it expandable or scalable and lastly is it reliable why are these three important because when a lot of this is done by the machine and using terabytes of data from all sources it does become very challenging for anybody using this to be comfortable with these three points the fairness obviously comes because a lot of this is dependent on historical data and when you deal with historical data many times the world has moved the circumstances have changed the parameters have changed so therefore what has happened in the past will not be happening in the future it is not going to be a reflective uh, of the past or the patterns but that needs to be considered equally when you talk about expandable or scalability uh, many of them you know you are looking at a data set which may not be a good representation of the rest of the data set and when it talks about uh, reliability then you know it's a question of how has the data been interpreted by the system interpretation is of again a big importance so this is where i feel there is a need to be very aware of this and therefore bring in an element of curation of these models uh, by a human interface and not just deploy exactly what is being thrown out by the machine and that is a sweet spot which i think as a firm we are trying to address one of the things that i want to really understand is how is sg analytics approaching this whole problem i'm sure you're working with various large enterprises who are demanding the use of gen ai across sectors in retail pharma healthcare banking how are you addressing this issue so let me share with you what am i exactly seeing in this space in my conversations with cxos of large organizations see there is a terrific pressure coming to the organization ceos and cxos from their board where they want to see the benefits of gen ai they want the organization to adopt it they are hearing a lot about it and they are want they are asking the question how these organizations are embracing it. but equally when people at the leadership level are talking about gen ai they are themselves very careful of ensuring that they do not go down the wrong path in terms of deploying gen ai because it can get you a lot of bad press in the event it goes off the handle so i am actually observing opportunities for firms like sg analytics here where companies who have a certain use case or a problem statement are coming and discussing that with us and want to incubate that conversation within our framework and see the success of it before they want to bring it back to their system and scale it up so that's one immediate uh, opportunity as well as phenomena that i'm seeing in the market while ai is one aspect of it the second aspect is the use of data uh, ai needs data and gen ai needs large amounts of data right so especially considering that gen ai needs so much data how are you addressing the privacy concerns of the usage of this data uh, for gen ai and it's glad uh, you know you asking that question to a company who is very passionate about esg and for you know both on on social and community aspect this is something that worries us as well so let me take it in two aspects one is uh, maybe three uh, one is you know the impact of this on intellectual and property rights uh, the second could be in terms of the impact of this on the organizational standpoint and third on social and community uh, standpoint let's look at deploying this in a area like in the european union right where gdpr is such a big concern that uh, the european union has signed up for and no personal data should come out of europe if at all so you need to anonymize the data mask the data bring it out and again de-anonymize and bring it back so given that sort of scenario it is becomes very restrictive for that market uh, and uh, we have to be very careful if you have to deploy any of those two uh, as a result of which uh, you know today we have started an office in bratislav in poland because we do not want the european data to come out of that uh, content uh, on on the uh, intellectual property you know when uh, gen ai gets into this sort of managing this data and getting insight from the data they have one has to be very careful in terms of what patent copyright violation is happening in the process uh, and uh, it sometimes you know gets mocked in the whole output that comes out for you to even be aware that something has got violated till someone points it out equally from an organizational impact you know the standard chatter has started that this will have a lot of impact on certain set of people 
which is again a little early for us to come to any conclusion. But, you know, it is creating some sort of a panic within the system, saying are some jobs going to be redundant, um, a certain organization is going to be redundant. And uh, these are, I think, too early conversations to have. We haven't seen the full breadth of its output. Uh, and, and the same applies for, you know, on the social and community side. Uh, some people think this will lead to more carbon emission. Some people think that this can, you know, lead to coming up with certain uh, information and insights that may hurt certain communities or their, you know, prospects, uh, which again, I think is quite misplaced. And uh, because there is so much of awareness now about it and so many more uh, watchdogs and governing bodies around it, I think they will definitely uh, put right restrictions and regulations in place to not allow this to miss. Fantastic. Okay. I think uh, this has been a great conversation, Sid. Uh, thank you so much for your time. My final question to you is, uh, in the broader context where enterprises will adopt Gen AI, how do you envision uh, ethical and a fair use of the technology in the future? And who are some of the right stakeholders that need to be a part of this uh, when implementing Gen AI? Yes, you know, this reminds me of that old adage that fire is a good servant but a bad master. Gen AI kind of fits in into the same place. Left to wrong hands and left to wrong purpose, it can have a disastrous effect. So I, I definitely believe that it is important to understand the right use case for this and use it in a manner which will make life is possible as we talk about in SG. It will improve life, it will reduce the gap between the privileged and the underprivileged, and it will make life much more um, beautiful, if I may use the word, uh, as against the concern about uh, the whole uh, disruption that it will create, something very similar to what we saw when initially automation came into play in late 80s and early 90s. So um, overall, I think uh, Gen AI is going to be a game changer, but it would need to be driven from the top and that's one of the reasons why, from an SGA standpoint, I relocated myself as CEO of the company into the US, as you are seeing that I'm right now sitting in New York. And I want to engage with the CXOs of large transnational companies and work with them and talk through and drive these issues with much more impact and effectiveness and really make uh, the difference in the way people will look at Gen AI in the future. Thank you.